Across the country and here in Alaska, it's safe to say it's officially wedding season. Yeah, in this week's story time with Ann Phil, author Laurel Downing Bill tells us how June became such a popular month for weddings and the challenges miners and uh, damsels of the Klondike Gold Rush era faced in order to tie the knot. Green grass, warmer temperatures, transitioning to summer certainly gives a bride and groom good reason to get married in June. Yeah, it's a tradition though that goes back long before the Klondike Gold Rush. In fact, June started to become a, a popular month for weddings as far back as medieval times. Laurel, why is that? Well, people just smelled better. Okay. During medieval times, people usually took their annual bath in May. So, in June, the bride would still smell pretty fresh. And just in case there was any body odor, she would gather up flowers and carry them on her wedding day. Back to Alaska and the Klondike Gold Rush. Miners often got married here for more than just love. Well, miners who came north in search of riches may have taken a bride for more practical reasons. Now in the springtime, as the ground thawed, prospectors would be out looking for just the right part of the earth that might yield some gold nuggets. And then when they found it, of course, they would have to lay claim to the mining rights for it. And by 1897, only one mining claim per miner in a district was allowed. But there was a loophole in the law that said a married couple could file a separate claim for a separate piece of property, which would then double the amount of land that a miner could prospect. So taking a bride might double his chances and bring him some more golden riches. But that's if there was a bride to be found, right? They were hard to come by. Yeah, there were very few women in the mining camps during the late 1890s. And if a miner did find a bride, he faced another challenge. There were no judges or preachers to seal the deal for him. So they had to come up with some more creative ways to make the nuptials work. And one of the most interesting I found was along the Koyukuk Trail when two lovers wanted to get married and instead of an official marriage contract, they drafted their own interesting document, the details of which were printed in the society pages of the Yukon Press. All right, Laurel, let's hear that contract. Aggie Dalton said, 10 miles from the Yukon on the banks of this lake, for a partner to Koyukuk, McGillis I take. We have no preacher, we have no ring, but it makes no difference, it's the same thing. To which Frank McGillis replied, I swear by my G pole under this tree, a devoted husband to Aggie I'll be. I'll love and protect her, this maiden so frail, from those sourdough bums on the Koyukuk trail. <laughs> and then French Joe blessed the union with, for $2 a piece in Chichaco money, I unite this couple in matrimony. He be a rancher, she be a teacher. I do the job up just as well as a preacher. Bravo. That's, well, that's well done. It was. And June is a beautiful month to marry. It is. It's, you know, the best weather a lot of the times. But if it coincides with that bath that she was saying back in the day. Oh, my. Oh, could I can't you imagine? Even. No, I was trying and to wrap, bouquet, wrap my head around that. And the bouquet, that's the whole tradition of holding those, those flowers. Is to not smell. Oh, can't imagine. <laughs> kind of takes know. the romance out of it, doesn't it? I <laughs> Well, next week in story time with Ann <laughs> Phil, uh, we're going to talk about the story of St. Michael and the Klondike Gold Rush. Why it didn't take long for the Russian village to become a bustling frontier town with thousands of prospectors looking for gold.